Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here, and today's video is part of a series on a dart frog vivarium build. Today's video will focus on the custom background. Most of the materials for this build came from a custom background kit that I purchased from anyherpeticulture.com. I'm very satisfied with the final results of the build, but I did have some wrinkles that I ran into along the way. So I wanted to share my step-by-step -step experience with you so that you had an idea of what to expect uh, if you're going to do a similar build. The three main materials used in the build were of course the cork bark. I received a lot of cork bark, didn't even use all of it, but I'm happy with that because I always have a use for extra cork bark. And then the Great Stuff Gaps and Cracks foam. I believe it came with two cans and I ended up using more than that, partly because I ran into some difficulties and I'll explain more about that later. And then of course the tubes of black silicone. I ended up buying an extra tube and ended up not needing to use that extra tube. I had just enough. I had a light duty silicone gun and I ended up purchasing a heavy duty one. And my advice would be to go ahead and buy the heavy duty one. It was worth it to me. Painter's tape wasn't in the kit, but ended up coming in useful. These two spatulas were included for working with the silicone and turned out to be indispensable for that purpose. These gloves came with the kit as well and were extremely important. Let's face it, great stuff foam and silicone are both very messy. And don't forget the safety goggles. A first step in the project is to apply a thin layer of silicone to the parts of the glass that are going to be covered by the custom background. This silicone helps prevent visibility of the great stuff foam from the outside of the vivarium, as well as provide a better surface for the great stuff foam to adhere to than glass alone. I taped off some areas as you can see here as I don't need silicone where the substrate is going to be. Make sure you apply the silicone in a very well ventilated area. I did this here out on the deck and I noticed that even though I used the spatulas which helped a lot to apply the silicone, the surface of the silicone was actually pretty rough. The silicone needed to dry for at least 24 hours and so while it was drying I took the opportunity to play with the cork bark a little bit with a space I had taped off that was the same size as the back of the vivarium, just to get an idea of what kind of configuration I might like. Once the silicone was dry, I started doing the same thing inside the tank. I used some crumpled paper to help give some depth to the cork bark and help me see what it might look like in an actual 3D configuration. I tried lots of different things just to get an idea of what I really wanted. And finally, with some help from my family, I came upon a rough idea of what I wanted it to look like. In the meantime, the silicone had gotten a little dusty, and so I vacuumed it off to try to minimize any issues that that might cause with adhesion. We took off the tape, and it was finally time to apply the Great Stuff foam. Now, as you can see, we're wearing gloves. This stuff is very, very messy, and it expands quite a bit, gets everywhere. I had to peel some off of the floor, and so on. So. Um, it's nice to have help as you can see we've got a couple of people helping me as we apply this to help hold things in place until they start to set and uh, felt like once we got this done we had made some actual improvements because we had our original rough draft of what we wanted it to look like but once we actually started doing it we came up with a few new ideas that I think actually turned out better and as you can see one of the cans actually just sort of spattered everywhere but luckily acetone removes the great stuff foam when it's wet and once it's dry it actually peels off of glass pretty easily without leaving much of a residue at all. Once the great stuff foam was in place it was time to allow it to cure for at least 24 hours and I did so but when it had dried we encountered the biggest challenge of the entire project and that was that all of the background completely separated from the silicone. It was pretty discouraging. In the meantime I could shave down the foam with a serrated knife to the actual shape and texture that I wanted. I contacted AnyHerp about my problem and they had some really good advice for me. They mentioned that I could use a thin layer of Great Stuff foam to attach the existing cured foam to the silicone and then once I applied the silicone itself it would kind of form a seal that would help support and connect the Great Stuff foam background to the glass. I decided not to take any chances though and I rinsed the silicone off to make sure there wasn't any dust and then I also noticed that the Great Stuff foam background was very very smooth in places almost like plastic wrap so I took a knife and just shaved off a thin layer in a lot of the areas that I could made it a little thinner 
but also made it a lot rougher so that it would be able to adhere better. I had also noticed that the great stuff foam had warped significantly in some areas and so as I was texturing it and shaving it down where I wanted it to I made it a lot thinner in those areas which helped it to be a lot more flexible and more receptive to a seal against the silicone on the back. So now that the silicone has been rinsed and thoroughly dried it's time to apply a thin layer of great stuff foam and then reattach the background. And I wasn't entirely confident that this would work just just like this and so I decided to weigh it down. I got some cans from the cupboard and weighed down the uh, great stuff just to maximize adhesion. And then I let that sit overnight and removed the cans. So at this point you can see that I had the background shaved down to my satisfaction. I'm planning where I'm going to put the silicone. It's really tricky to do this part in some ways because the silicone dries very fast and you need to put the background substrate mix on it before it dries and you have a, only a few minutes to do so. So I had a partner. My son helped me out and we planned that I would cover an area with silicone and he would come right behind me with the background mix and press a whole bunch of that into there. You want to cover every bit of silicone really thickly with more of the background substrate than you actually need to make sure you don't leave any bald spots. And that actually worked out really, really well. The only wrinkle that we ran into really was that I ended up getting a little bit of silicone on the glass. That's not a big problem. Uh, we just took a razor blade and very carefully scraped that off once it had cured, which takes about 24 hours. So once the silicone had cured, we turned it upright to see how the seal had held and to see if we had missed any spots. And everything looked good. The seal held. It was tightly adhering to the background. As you can see, a lot of the excess background substrate material is falling off as expected, and we removed the rest of the excess with some gentle brushing. I don't know if you notice them here. There are a couple of very small spots where maybe a little bit of great stuff foam is showing or a little bit of silicone is showing. But the truth is, once the plants are in there and from the vantage point from which this is going to be viewed, they're not going to be noticeable. The only issue that I really had to address here was that there was some excess silicone in the frame. And so I took a razor blade. There was also a little bit of great stuff foam there, actually. And so I took a razor blade and just carefully removed those little bits of silicone and uh, great stuff foam that were in there because those could compromise the seal that I had created with the flyproof vent and so on. I didn't want um, any irregularities on the frame that might um, compromise the um, flyproof nature of the lid that I had constructed. So um, once I had done that, we were essentially good to go. And there you have it, the custom background I built using the kit that I purchased from anyherpeticulture.com. Even though I ran into a couple of wrinkles, I'm satisfied with the results. And in the description to this video, I'll put a link to the tutorial on their website that includes both text and pictures, just in case you feel like you would like to try one of these out. Thanks for watching today. If you haven't already, please check out the rest of the playlist on my dart frog vivarium build please feel free to leave a comment a like or share this video and if you haven't already please subscribe and then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video